I'm going to ask you, yes. my Lord. I'm Stephen, I'm 54. I've had a substance abuse maybe 15, 20 years. First it was amphetamine, and then alcohol. Okay, well, my name's Stephen. Uh, I'm 39. Uh, I was from, I'm from Derby, but I've lived in Blackpool all my life. Uh, you know, I'm... Uh, recently out of prison. Uh, you know, and I, I'm just finding out who I am. Uh, I've been in and out of prison all my life, so, you know, and I've never been clean, so I'm just finding all that stuff out. Louise. I don't know, I'm still finding myself, I think. Different. Not what I was expecting at all. Bit of a shock to the system when you first start. Challenging. Uh, fun. Uh, serious. I loved it. At the first week, I was ready just to go. I couldn't knock it. And then I thought, no, can't just rely on the first week to make a judgment. So I just stayed and I stayed right to the end, graduated. Well, my life story, uh, bereavement letter, they were hardcore, you know. And like, you know yourself, it's an honest group. So it's not just, no good just writing any old flannel down, is it? You just go right into it. It was hard work. <laughs> Talking to the mirror. Um, because it just, it felt like the person I was talking to was there. Um, and you could see it through your own eyes. It was, it was a weird experience, but very rewarding. May I ask who you was talking to? My daughter. I think I wrote a, a grief letter. Uh, I lost my brother and I never really dealt with that stuff. Uh, I got worse when he died and I just always pushed it to the back of my mind. Uh, you know, I did a bit of work around it, I did a grief letter. Uh, you know, and uh, I guess it made me feel a bit better afterwards talking about it. I could always talk about it and, and then mask it with a bit of humour afterwards so I didn't really get into too many feelings. and. <laughs> You know, I, I think I got past that and I talked about it and maybe moved on a bit. So that was really good for me. Also a life story. It was just every day the same thing. Um, just waking up, going, using substances, out all day, um, trying to get home for school times. Um, just, it was horrible really, 
yeah. Didn't enjoy it, especially not towards the end. First I thought I was clever, but obviously consequences started coming. Um, and my mum moved away and everything just got a whole lot worse. So. From old as being about 11, I started on some substance um, and just never stopped. I picked up drugs when I was really young. Left school, went to a job. Uh, started hanging around with the wrong crowd and they started using uh, heroin for me. Uh, and it quickly spiralled out of control. Uh, I was in and out of prison for the next 20 years, committing crime, uh, going back to my old ways. I didn't, I didn't uh, really know a way out, so I just guess, you know, I used to get out of prison and I used to, I used to get off methadone in prison and when I got out of it, I was, I was a prolific offender in this town, so I just used to get put back on the script to kind of stop me committing crime, which obviously never worked. I never realised I was hurting them as much as I was. You know, I love them two to bits, but I think Looking back on all the times I could have spent with them and, you know, my mum having to move away because she'd had enough. Um, that really hurt me, that. And when I did my grief letter, it was to my daughter. And that was... Like, how sorry I was for not taking her to the park and not being there when she got home from school. Um, just all and her having to see some of the things she's seen and lived the way we live. So yeah, it was hard. Uh, for me, I think it was just growing up on a council estate uh, with loads of friends uh, whose lifestyles were a bit chaotic. My, my lifestyle with my mum and that was really uh, good. You know, there was no smoking weed, but the friends I started hanging around with. <coughs> Their mums used to sell weed and stuff like that, and I was... I was attracted to, to that stuff, and I did that, so... For me, I think just... I don't know, just growing up on this day and, uh, and everybody else doing it, peer pressure, and then I did it and kind of enjoyed it carried on and then when I got into heroin it, 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 it just went downhill and just prisons followed from that. So like, um, she'd wait up until I was in at night, um, she'd make sure I was alright. Um, when she used to come back from her dad she used to always save me money. You know, it was like reverse roles for a bit. I suppose I was aware of it, I was just selfish. Um, I'd always have to have used a substance before I would have took her anywhere. Um, so, like, if we planned to do anything, it was depending on whether I was sorted first for what time he was going. You know, just stuff like that. So yeah, I was aware of it and it's the day she come back from my dad's, I knew she'd have me money. Um, she's always been very protective of me, like she, she never let her dad call me or, you know, yeah, reverse roles. Um, but now she can just, she can just do like normal teenage stuff like on a Saturday she'll stay in bed and you know just watch a Netflix she's always got a phone yeah my daughter would kill my daughter if anything happened you know to me um, and just seeing her happy 
and having a little attitude back and, you know, just like normal teenagers should live. Yeah. I don't think she has any worries anymore. And that makes my peace of mind a lot better. Like, I heard her talking to my friend the other day and they said, what if you know it's the changes in your mum? And she said, she says no, no, and she means it. You know, instead of just like, yeah, you can stay out playing until 10 o'clock. You know, stuff like that. It's like, no, you're in at a normal time. Um, her teas are done at normal times. And she has ordinary pocket money. Um, because on paydays, I'd just, I'd just give her like 50 quid and think, right, she's quiet for the you know, so I could go and do what I wanted to do with the rest. Um, so, yeah. I loved it. That, that was my experience with it. Uh, and I enjoyed meeting other people as well on it. You're back down to earth. And why it's so hard sometimes because you've never been on this planet for umpteen years. So when you arrive on it, oh, everything's different, isn't it? Everything looks, oh, I've got this to pay, that to pay, this to pay. And whereas before you just, right, I must get myself all kinds of super with that. So we turned us all that in deep, you know, pros and cons and the good things and bad. And at the minute, the good things are well over waiting the, the bad. But I made a promise to myself not to fall back into the routine I was in. And that was getting bored, sitting isolated, and then having a can. And then it just, you know, it just goes up to control again, doesn't it? So now I get myself out, got myself a fishing rod, and no, I'll get on with things like any normal person would. Instead of just drink, sleep, drink, sleep. So. Uh, a lot of people know me through what I was like, so I always feel a bit less than and judging me and, uh, you know, stay away from him, he's ruthless, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I struggle with that in Blackpool, and I know I've. I, everyone who's using as well. Uh, but I never thought I'd ever stay clean in this town. And I guess by getting clean, it's turned my way of thinking, you know, cos I've moved towns and none of that stuff worked. Uh, I come here and I stay clean. Relapse prevention, straight ahead of them, all of them. CBT, everything. Nothing seemed to have been working. I maybe worked for a couple of months. And then just gradually but slowly but took a nose dive. But now I've done that, it doesn't even enter my mind anymore. It's good. Well I know if I don't stay clean I'll lose my daughter. Um the bond I've got with my mum, I wouldn't necessarily lose my mum because she's never given up on me. Um but I disappoint her in a lot of ways. And you know, she's getting older now and just like little things like being able to take a shopping like how we used to do. Um, I'd, I'd just lose my happiness and... Well, I put me, I'm um, doing my volunteer training and everything now. I'm at college, something I've never done, never even went to school. So, just keep me focused and not sway off the track. You know, I just want to be OK myself, you know, feel all right around other people and, and uh, move forward. Well, I'm on my second course at college now and get this voluntary work in and that just to ease myself back in. And the world's my oyster. Well, it's looking that way anyway, so... And like I say, the only thing that'll bring me down is myself. Everything. Everything I've got in my life I'm grateful for. Um, my mum and my daughter the most. Um, and just being able, just being taught to, that I can live clean. 
because I didn't think that was possible. There was a few police officers who, who helped me, obviously. There was a woman called Becky. Uh, she she arrested me first ever time and I got sent to prison and and over the years she always tried to help me but you know I was too far gone. The carrot officer in Preston Prison called Robin, uh, he helped me for years, you know, in and out of Preston Prison. Uh, uh, my probation officer right now, Ellen, is is really good with me. My old CDT worker's called Johnny. Uh, I always see him. Uh, he makes me smile because I used to really, I was a mess when I used to get him and he used to try and get me out of it, but it was, I was just too far gone. I wasn't open to, to changing. I just, I didn't know how else to do it. So all of them people. It's my next missus, I was married like 25 years. Still, she still comes to the Blackpools. Kids are down every summer. So they come up every time there's holiday, they come up free order for them. Hiya Mum, I just want to say thank you for never ever giving up on me. Um, I appreciate everything you do for me and you still continue to do everything for me now. Um, and I just love knowing that you know that I'm living clean these days. Um, and just thank you for everything. Yeah, I'd like to thank my mum. Uh, my mum stopped by me through everything. Prisons, uh, you know, and she means the world to me. My mum's everything. My sister, my nephew, my stepdad Paul, who's been a big part of my life. Uh, to Alicia, um, I am sorry for everything I've ever put you through. I'm so glad our lives have changed round. You was my main reason for changing everything round. Then um, you never gave up on me. And I'll love you forever for that. And just thank you for being you. Yeah.
this last You realize the sun doesn't go down Just in 